In this video I'm going to be showing you how to disable a service or a device that's preventing Windows XP from starting up or booting up. So what we need to do is um, put our Windows XP CD into the drive and boot to that dr uh, CD. Okay. Now if you haven't got a Windows XP CD you can use uh, a recovery console ISO that I created on my channel. You can get a link from there somewhere. So here we have our XP. I just want to make sure we're booting to the CD. Okay. So um, I can actually uh, either boot to CD or I can actually boot to the ISO image if I wanted to. It's probably going to be quicker. So I'm just going to quickly boot up here and, and then get to the recovery console itself. Then as I said, this is the ISO um, recovery console ISO image that I've got. There's no actual Windows operating system built into it. It's just the actual recovery console. That's why it's booting up so quick. So as you can see, I just want to push R to enter the recovery console. Okay, and let this load up. And uh, you may see something different here, but I've only got one partition, so I'm just going to put one in there. Enter. It's asking for the administrator password. I haven't got one, but if you have, you need to enter it at this stage. Push Enter. And we're going to change directory to System32 like so. So now we're in Windows and System32. Okay, so what I need to do here is list SVC and this will list all our services. Okay, so as you can see I can see all the services here that I've I've got and if I wanted to I can just keep coming through them until I find the one that's causing me the problem that's stopping the system from booting up and I would disable that uh, service. So once I can get to the desktop I can then correct, correct the problem with what's going on. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly get to the bottom of this list here and I'm going to let's just get to the bottom I'm trying to find uh, UPS, that's a good one to disable um, Telnet used to be but that's disabled by default. Okay, you can see it's been disabled already so, okay, so let's um, just uh, let's find something I can do. Okay, windsock that'll do. I can always put it back. So, say for argument's sake, it was the windsock. We need to do is disable. Like so, windsock. There you go. W Z C. That will that will do. Anyone that is going to work. Disable. I think I might have spelt that windsock one wrong. You've got to get exactly how it is spelt on the uh, thing, otherwise it won't work. Okay. So just make sure you write it down. If it's all capitals, put all capitals. Otherwise it won't uh, disable. It'll say don't recognise. Okay. So we're going to disable this. Okay. Automatic updates. And I'm just going to push disable that push enter and there you go that's uh, been found and it's going to disable that on the next reboot okay service disabled if you want to re uh, if you want to enable anything okay so what you need to do is type enable like so ups say for instance and then you need to put service underscore auto something of that nature and uh, auto start, I think that is something like that. Hopefully, that works. And if it does, we should get a uh, there you go. The new service uh, start type for this service has been set to service auto start, so that will start when you reboot the system. Uh, UPS will auto start, okay. You can actually disable that if you want to, but I'm just showing you how to enable and disable a service and a device if you've got any boot up issues. So I hope this has been some use here. If you have got a, an issue there with a, a service or device, then this is the method you can do to actually get to your desktop again. Okay, so I hope it's been some use. My name is Brian from brightech.co.uk. If you enjoyed my videos, remember please subscribe and rate for my videos. If you've got any questions, then uh, post them um, in a private message to me, or better still, go to the forum and uh, post it over there, okay? 
So thanks guys for your support. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.